that the exhibition's upstairs. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it. And I, you know, it's just so I'm just so thrilled to be in conversation with both of you today. And Jordan, thank you so much for being here and for all your support. I'm grateful that you've generously shared your artworks and uh, really that I think everybody who's gathered here today has already seen exactly how rich your collection is and how incredible it is. But to tell you a little bit more that this is what you're seeing or just a little glimpse into the depths that Jordan holds. Jordan grew up surrounded by art in his mother's Portland, Oregon art gallery, began collecting in 1988 in earnest, acquiring post-war world, uh, post-war prints and multiples, and beginning to build one of the country's most impressive collections of prints, and now also paintings, sculpture, installation, and beyond. With more than 20,000 pieces of art, the collection features major holdings of some of the most internationally renowned artists working today, and as I hope you've gotten a glimpse of, deeply represents and promotes dirt diversity and equity in the arts. Importantly to us at UC Santa Cruz and at the MA, in 1997, Jordan developed a program to share the work from his personal and family collections, particularly focused on creating partnerships with university art museums and really to support higher education. This lending program has expanded to an incredibly ambitious calendar of nationally touring exhibitions. The foundation also publishes scholarly brochures and catalogs and funds museum outreach and programming that furthers the mission of promoting education. Jordan and his foundation also has been firmly committed to expanding audiences for contemporary art to be more reflective of the diversity of our society. So Jordan, again, thank you for everything and thank you so much for being here. So I'll let you talk in just a moment, but first now I'm gonna also say what a thrill it is to have Leonardo Drew with us. Jordan has been an active supporter and collector of Leonardo's amazing practice for some time, and it's just an honor to have both of you here. We you know, have the images in the back of the screen, of course, or Leonardo's practice. And I'm sure that you're aware that the um, Leonardo's expansive and breathtaking sculpture 215B is one of the keystones of, of strange weather spanning the back wall of the exhibition. That phenomenal, and what I'll have to say is sublime, work of art is indicative of Leo's larger practice. He's known for creating abstract sculpture works that play upon the dynamic tension between order and chaos that marks our history and contemporary experience. Drew's talent and passion for art was recognized as an early age, first exhibiting work at the age of 13, went on to attend Parsons School of Design and the Cooper Union for the Advancement of Science and Art, his work has been shown nationally and internationally or included in numerous public and private collections, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, the Guggenheim, LACMA, the Hirshhorn Museum, Tate London, all sorts of stuff. And I'm gonna give just one quote by Roberta Smith before I stop, which because Roberta Smith from the New York Times calls his large reliefs pocketed, splintered, seemingly burned, bristling there, unexpectedly delicate uh, elsewhere an endless catastrophe seen from above. The energies intimidated in these works are beyond human control, bigger than us. And it's beyond a privilege to show Leonardo's work here and to have him here. So thank you so much. And I'm so glad that you'll be here to talk with us today. So how do we want to start? Do we want to start by asking Leo to talk about what brought him here? You want, you want. <laughs> Jordan, <start. laughs> So if you ask how I first heard of Leo, uh, as Rachel's mentioned, I started buying prints and multiples aggressively starting in the late 80s. My mother had closed the gallery in Portland, turned over one of her assistants, and I guess I felt a bit adrift, still committed to art of the Northwest. I think we have some of the best artists anywhere, and in every community I go to, even though I now collect the best of the major national and international artists, I always talk about the importance of supporting local artists in all our communities. So uh, the biggest print fair is in New York. And uh, there's Manning Dick Solomon, who's one of the legends in the print world, and he has a gallery print, Pace Prints, where Leonardo does all his print, printing work, which isn't here, but they're spectacular. And years ago, he asked me if I would fund a lecture series. I said every year at the big print fair, I said, sure. So maybe about eight or nine years ago, 10, something like yeah. that, he called up and said, I've got a great idea of the, the lecture this year, a guy named Leonardo Drew, have you heard of him? I said, no. He said, you will love him and his work. I said, I trust you implicitly. So that's when I first met him. And I began to see the work and started buying it. And then I heard him talk. As you'll find out today, he is such a good speaker and, uh, and conveys um, um, the passion 
verbally that you see physically and visually upstairs in his work. So uh, um, I love everything he does. And uh, you know, I was thinking about your work and um, uh, because we be, have such deep affection for him personally, you can see how we have this chemistry interact and joke. One thing about him is, you know, I uh, get home, I have uh, older daughters and I have little boys, and so we'll have dinner at 6.30 and then uh, they go up and have their bath and then my partner puts them to sleep and I'm sitting there reading the paper and stuff. So around 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, West Coast time, I'll call him <laughs> and he always answers. <laughs> He's working like at 2 and then 3 in the morning, you know? Oh, and, wow. uh, <laughs> but what I wanted to say is that I think the word that you used a second ago about the order and chaos mm -hmm. uh, is that first thing I sensed about your work. And I sort of, sort of became enthralled with that. But in thinking about your work more, it's, I think, far, far, far deeper levels. And, you know, the last maybe 25 years we've seen in this country, decades too late, but the rise especially of a lot of uh, African-American black artists and especially uh, women, well, both men and women, but especially women too, uh, which has been wonderful. And yet most of them deal very visually, as you were describing, Alison Saar, Lorna Simpson, Ellen Gallagher, uh, Hank Willis Thomas, on and on. They really hit you with these themes, whereas your themes are as powerful, but more <coughs> subtle. Mm -hmm. So maybe go back and help explain, in terms of your history, you talk a bit about how when you were young, you became a, an artist young and started doing comic book things and all the comic book companies, as you mentioned, wanted to hire you. But then you saw soon after that a uh, show Jackson of Pollock. Rothko's, Jackson Pollock, Jackson Pollock right. and uh, his work and then Picasso a little later. And mm -hmm. that, that, tell us about what happened when you saw that uh, Jackson Pollock work, because here you were doing cartoons and well, things. That, that, that's what I thought art was, because um, my goodness, you know, um, from comic books, uh, Marvel comics, DC comics, um, uh, this is what we're sort of push. You know, when you're a kid, this is what you know. If you have facility, if you can draw these things, then you're an artist. And and in any end, it was like in my understanding, like you know, the leap from that into uh, something abstract. I couldn't imagine until I saw Jackson Pollock. And that was, I saw his work actually in the black and white book in the library. Black and white, Jackson Pollock is still powerful stuff. And as an extractionist, it's like you have to be able to sort of read uh, energy and language and abstraction in order to sort of like have that, you know, make an impact. It made an impact on me. I'm, I'm actually using my facility to sort of draw what I could see. But he was actually delving into something that was, um, you know, so esoteric and so, I mean, it was abstract. So it was like, okay, how do I get beyond the prettified surface? You know, that means, you know, how do I sort of like not use my facility to sort of get at what's beyond this sort of obvious? And so I decided when DC and Marvel came at me when I was like, um, would have been probably 16, 17. They asked me to come and join them in their, uh, you know, you know, and even DC and Marvel were sort of like, and it's kind of like back and forth, like, okay, you should be working with us. And at the time, they had the uh, Christopher Reeve uh, movie, uh, Superman, uh, out, and um, and DC was like, okay, you should join us because we have this. I had already seen Jackson Pollock, so there was no way I was going either or. So, so, so that's how powerful abstraction can be. And to this day, I actually tied my hands, said, okay, no more of this drawing no more uh the, you know like uh no more painting only now recently has color entered in and the work that you guys have upstairs is probably one of my first the first iterations of color in my work if you look back at there's no color <laughs> is there's no color i mean i stopped painting altogether and um like um after you know um you know my travels exploring uh china it started sort of working its way back in and um, and now it's 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 full on, you know, uh, you know, looking at Julie's work, Miratu's work, uh, for instance, which you guys see also as a sort of jump off point to like um, uh, uh, something, you know, um, sublime and powerful, uh, you know, through the language of abstraction, it's not unlike music, you know, and how it can reach all of us. And there are no walls there. You know, there's nothing there to sort of keep you from actually being allowed into this world of uh, of of of, uh, of self analogy, emotion, and and uh, and otherness. I mean, I think that this is it links us 
with a, un, in an unparalleled way. Um, uh, if I were to give you an image, you know, of, of 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 me as a you know as an individual, you would have to deal with that and then try to empathize with <laughs> that imagery. Now, that work is powerful. This work is also powerful, but abstraction actually lends itself to, um, like I said, when I'm shocked by Jackson Pollock in black and white, that should say everything. <laughs> that says everything. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I'm doing this, you know, and I'm showing you exactly where my hands are, but abstraction is actually, it, it's, it's, it's magic. <laughs> it's allowing you in, you know, the doors are wide open. Mm -hmm. And, um, and to this day, I'm still sort of like, you know, you know, mining that, you know, like uh, my discoveries in abstraction. Yeah. When you were interesting, so here you're 16, you see that image of Jackson, mm -hmm. uh, and you, mind goes crazy. Mm -hmm. When you went to art school, mm -hmm. didn't you have to paint a lot of bowls and fruits and beach scenes? Well, what interesting was work, enough. What was, your, what was your work like in school? So usually, usually the artists do the normal sort of work and then they find their path. Well, what was your work like in school? <laughs> well, we're, we're talking college, right? In college, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, um, once they, once you make that decision to sort of like say, okay, well, you're not going to be joining the, uh, the, the, the the comic book crew, you know, uh, or um, uh, it was, you know, like uh, now you have to sort of like go up against um, uh, your teachers who are very much focused on your facility and what you can do. So I started out actually at Parsons, not Cooper. I yeah. transferred over to Cooper. Cooper right. So when I was at Parsons, I had a teacher um, who would, you know, they, we would have their group crits and they would hang all the works up and say, okay, which one of these works is Leonardo's? And they would say that everyone would know which one was mine. And he said, why do you know that this is Leonardo's work? And they say, well, it seems to be more advanced. And he said, seems to be, seems to be. And I said, you know what? I'm in the wrong school. <laughs> <laughs> because he he was already picking up on there's something else beyond and you're capable of actually traveling past that this thing that everyone believes is it's superior but actually is not you know there's something else there there are other questions that you can be asking and if 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 you have the right keys then you can actually open those doors so my move to Cooper Union uh, from that point was just like you know I met Jack Witten you know, who's uh, my uh, mentor for, you know, my years there and, uh, and a great friend uh, from that point on. And he introduced me to a number of abstract black artists, which at that time, believe it or not, was like, that's, uh, you, you could, those two things did not go together, you know, abstract black, you know, it's like, okay, you know, I didn't know any better. <laughs> but these guys are older artists, Joe Overstreet. Uh, Mel Edwards, uh, 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 um, you know, it, it, it's a long list of artists that Jack continues. So even Romar Bearden and um, um, and uh, uh, Jacob uh, Lawrence were the only two that were allowed in. Now, when I say allowed in, there's a there's a door that you need to sort of get past, and then you're accepted into the mainstream. Uh, Romar Bearden and, and Lawrence were that, and and Jack would always say there are only two allowed in, one to two allowed in at a time. So we had to wait our turn, you know. So, so <laughs> you know, but his we, they were under the rug, and um and but I also understood that the path that I was taking, it, there were my, my examples it, of what the kind of success that you could have as an abstract abstract artist. Um, not too long before Jack's death. Um, uh, art form called me and he wanted to talk about Jack and uh, they said all the wrong things and I of course called them on it as they were saying, <laughs> they were saying well um, uh, wasn't Jack brave to actually you know do and he can do his art make his you know when no one was I said what are you talking about he, he, he's, a, he's an addict you know he has to make his work he's an artist if you're an artist you have to make work you have to, it doesn't matter if success, if those things are byproducts, they, they're not that important, um, but you have to get up in the morning, you have to make art because you were born an artist. So explain that to someone who actually should under, have understood the history of art, you know, uh, it, it just gives you a, you know, this idea of the great remove of, 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 of how they're understanding a black person as an abstract artist. How is that even possible? How do you sort of, now, you know, the leap has been made and the correct, you know, they're trying to correct certain things now, but not that long ago, like I said, these guys are under the rug. So it's like, it's interesting to sort of um, note the artists, you know, that are still, you know, of color, 
who make decisions to sort of go in a place where it's actually unsafe mm -hmm. <laughs> or unprofitable or set up to be unprofitable as, as an abstractionist because they, the world really wants you to speak on <laughs> what they believe you should know and that we should be continue educated on. But, you know, we're, 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 all, we're all connected. You know, so this, 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 this it's, it's, a, it's an unbroken chain. You know, even if you're trying to sort of make divisions, we are all the same. <laughs> We're all on that same path. We're all striving for the same things, um, spiritually and otherwise. And art is actually that avenue that actually opens up possibilities for a higher self. And, um, uh, and that, it doesn't get any better than that, you know. In terms of what inspires you, I'm sure the audience upstairs who were able to see the work, and for those of you that haven't yet, you have a big treat in store. They're probably wondering, that big, is it called 215? 215B. <laughs> how do you come up with it? How do you, what, uh, and I've asked you before, artists like Ellsworth Kelly, in his studio you'd see a workbook, and he would figure out mathematically everything, the angles, the numbers, and everything, whatever, and then he would make his work. Okay. When I asked you, if you do that, you think about exactly where everything's going to go before you do it. What have you said? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can only tell you because of my, my beginnings, I, 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 I have this idea that you're, you're, you lose a lot by actually doing these kind of studies. And um, the fact that I'm actually from that school of thought where you actually could draw. A lot of artists now, abstractionists uh, especially, they you know anything about com composing compositions because they don't have a base in drawing. So it, it's it's like I'm from a place where that was actually what sort of made, you know, like you were decided you were an artist because you actually could draw and paint, you know. But, but now it's like they jump right into abstraction. So I'm sort of like, you know, I, I tied my hands and said, you know, you can do that. You're not going to be doing that anymore. No more drawing, no more painting, all those things that came easy. Now you have to sort of figure out a composition in another way. So it's not really so much about being able to sort of have the studies and then sort of like say, this is where this goes and that. You have to get into that a space in your head and your physical space and compose. Feel the space, understand the space, and then allow things to happen. Become the weather. Become the weather. So the piece upstairs, what inspired you and... In how did you figure out what to do? Well, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, <laughs> the interesting part about um, uh, space and how, you know, artists will always tell you that, you know, well, they attempt not to have the space dictate how they will realize their actual work, scale of it and, you know, scope of the space. But I know full well that the space actually absolutely influences. You guys are, you guys were able to put that piece up but you're missing a section, is that right? Okay. I came in, I made the piece, I didn't realize that it was a section missing on it. So it's a, that tells you everything about how, 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 how these things can actually become the space. So, 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 so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way of just kind of getting out of the way of traditions and um, understanding that there, there, there are always um, ways of resolving or coming up with solutions to problems. And, um, and, you know, being an artist, that's, that's, that's what it was all about. It's like trying to resolve or solve, you know, like a, the, the human condition and always trying to sort of, you know, how do I make, you know, two plus two equals six, you know? So it, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's a great, it's, it's, a, it's a great um, a, 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 a route, you know? And I, I, I like, I like, I think that's, a, you know, always kind of turning things on your head, you know? If that makes when, any sense. When did yeah. you know? When did you know this piece was finished? How do you know when a piece is finished? And how many works of art do you work on at any one time? Uh, I have seven things I call them seven crying babies. So it's like <laughs> because you, they're, they're, they're they're all screaming for attention. So you have to kind of run around and sort of get bottles to this one and that one. And so it's 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 just uh, you 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 have to have an ear for what each one needs. And a lot of time, what that one needs can actually answer the question to what this one needs. So it, it's it, you know I don't go through slumps because it's 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 uh you have seven crack babies there's no time for slumps so you have to continue to sort of like you know adjust and actually figure out what each one needs you know and, and it's it's uh and when they're finished is only when you guys drag them out of the studio because I have no respect for things in the studio and they're in the studio and even if they're sold. <laughs> 
<laughs> you better get them out of the studio. Yeah, so there, there, there's a, the cotton wall piece. You know that piece? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, that actually is not the piece that I created initially. You know, now they, those folks don't know this, but I can, nobody should tell them. <laughs> but but that, 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 there was one curator that realized that this piece would be more horizontal than vertical. You know, but they left in the studio just long enough. And the more the, the the making of the art for me, for me, the making of the art is actually more important than the actual art. The the finished product, which I don't believe is ever really finished. It, it's there always there's always a way of actually accessing the next route by actually committing to the next situation. That mean that might mean sacrificing what you what you would consider finished. So if it's sitting around the studio, it's like you know, sometime later, I can go, this, I mean, look at the piece upstairs. It's a good thing that you guys have it here. But it's like I said, I would have pushed that, this, that, that, and pushed this and pulled this and what that way. But it's, they, they, they scream at you for po other, other possibilities. And, um, and I think for me, that's the beauty of, of, of making things is that they, 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 they always invite um, other better selves or other possibilities, you know. So, so, yeah, it's a good thing that you guys drag them out of the studio. <laughs> Can I ask the kind of selfish question, of course, because we named the exhibition Strange Weather and partially from your statement that you work as the weather. So will you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, you know, uh, you know I, within all of us, uh, we are not separate from nature. We are actually nature of nature. We are nature. We, we're, even though we like to believe that we're in control of things, we are actually we 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 die. We we we, we are born and we die. We uh, uh we disintegrate and we come again back into the great circle. So I think that like uh, understanding that you, uh, you know that there is no separation between the two things, and you in fact can become the weather. And whenever we're, I'm actually constructing these things and I work with the crew, the way to invite them in is to allow them to sort of understand this philosophy so that they can actually understand randomness and at the same time um, poetics, the poetics of actually being. And so weather, the, the, the weather is magnificent. I mean, we, we actually try to confine it and try to, you know, we fear it, but actually we are not separate from it. We're just as chaotic. Um, and also at the same time of, you know, of trying to make sense of the things that are actually, you shouldn't even be trying to make sense of, you know, you know, my work is actually about those very things, you know, so um, um, you can become the weather, you can understand um, uh, or uh, find yourself in line with uh, a chaos and, um, and still be okay with that. It's actually a natural force. It's a natural force. You know? mm -hmm. Do you have a question again about chaos? Because I'm sorry, guys. It sounds it sounds a little confusing, but actually, it's not. It's not. It's not, it's not that. It's not that difficult. <laughs> don't up, don't overcomplicate. If that's all I'm saying. Just allow. It's, it don't do not overcomplicate. It's it's a dance that we all are actually a part of, and we you know we come and we go in and out of this dance. So that is exactly what the weather is. Mm -hmm. yeah. You might mention that, um, uh, and again, I, I ask those questions. I'm always curious about about how an artist work, what their studio is like, what when is it finished, all those things. But uh, and his studio is wonderful. He has like seven, eight pieces all the time. And and uh, uh, but um, talk about your travel schedule because as you've suggested to me before, uh, traveling, getting away is important to you. Why and where do you go? Well, I mean, there are all these cradles of civilization, um, uh, and I think that. You, I like that the idea that you can place yourself as an antenna, right, and a, a receiver of information in different locations, different places, um, um, and allow, without asking questions, you know, of your, of you know, of your, of your surroundings, just go to these places and and allow yourself to become those places, and you know that information will travel through you. As an artist, it, ha it travels through you, and now it has to come out. So, like, for instance, when I went to uh, Gori Island, which is, like, where uh, my ancestors went, you know, from coming out of Dakar, that port anyway, they would go into Gori Island, which is, like, the dungeons, and then uh, from there, you could be placed on the ships, be shipped out to different countries. And um, I went there, um, and my body just took in all that energy. And um, I didn't come back to the studio saying, I am now going to make something about my experience and what my ancestors went through. Didn't have to do that because that, that information went in. It is going to find its way out. 
And that was, that was like 1993, 92 when that happened. First example of what it means to sort of like actually allow your body to be a receiver of information. We're all of it. We, all of us are this. It's just whether or not we actually are going to allow the information to sort of come in and then come out. In, and, and, and you have to interpret that inf information. Each individual as it's going in is now going to come out in your voice. So, so realizing these things in your voice, allowing the information to come in and to come out, that is actually the art of being an artist, is actually navigating those channels. So, so as information is flowing in, um, uh, you know, I, I didn't have to be literal about it. it and, 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 and when the works did come out, I didn't even recognize that this was why this came out this way. And like, um, you know, there, there are, you know, like, uh, well, I don't know. Is there a way to go back on that thing? Is there a way to go back on the images? Go back? Go backwards? Because I think we should actually see. We can get some visuals. Yeah, go back. Go. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Faster, 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 faster. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Okay, go, go forward a little bit. More. Right there. Go, go to the next image. That, that one. Okay. Now, now that came sometime later. I don't know. I don't, the, the lighting is yeah, the, from here. It's difficult to know what we're seeing. Can you turn off the light, the overhead? Okay, so all right. Yeah. Right. Okay, now any of these images, that one or the next one, go to the next one. And we're going to bounce back and forth. Go back to the, the last one. Okay, now, and go back to the first one because this is only a detail of that one. Now, now I look at that and my number of the works uh, for a specific reason. It allows you, as a viewer, to have your own experience without actually knowing what I felt about the work. I don't want to navigate and tell you what you should see. You should be able to feel this. If, it's, if, it, if, it's, if it resonates, then it should actually speak to you. And it should become a mirror. So you actually are standing in front of you when you're standing in front of this. You're not standing in front of me. So I'm not telling you what to see. So, so their number, this is number 43. Uh, it's not like I go around remembering all the numbers, but I know this is number 43 because when I did do Gory Island, some years later, this thing came up. So it's like, um, that's Gory Island. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't making this piece about that situation, but it, I can't help but look at that and say it was a catacombs, you know, and, and, and the cla claustrophobic situation that the bodies are, it's, 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 it, th th there's, I went through it, you know, I was there and like, um, and this is the information being passed on to me and now it has to sort of come out. And um, I never actually go in literally saying I am going to make work about this particular experience. My recent experience is the China that actually is what you guys have hanging upstairs. The color, I, I didn't know anything about, you know, like how color could interject itself uh, into the works. And I think as you sort of move forward in all these images, you won't see, I don't think you will see color. Um, but recently going, um, well, it was four years back and forth to a China, mainland China and studying porcelain and glazing. Um, uh, with artisans there, uh, interesting enough, what they ended up sort of like pushing into me was, you know, a, a sense, a new color sense, and what was possible, and um, and really what's what's upstairs is the probably best example of like uh, of those journeys. So um, uh, and like I said, I didn't go there believing that I was going to come away with, you know, uh, um, this idea of a new iteration of what color could be in my work. It's just that that it's naturally going into you has to now come out, you know. I guess one of the things I thought about when you say chaos is there also seems to be this tight control over your work. You know, there's this this sense because I mean I I sat you know for days and days and days. We I think that probably it took ten days to install the work upstairs, which came in forty crates. Yeah. Right. I, I did think too. He's got seven <laughs> projects going on at any one time. How big is his studio? Uh, I, all, all I can tell you. All I can tell you is, all I can tell you is he didn't pay me enough. <laughs> Store his work. <laughs> all, all, all love, all love. <laughs> there seems to be this like real, you know, that even as your works, the experience of chaos, or actually it's kind of chaos frozen, but I think that, you know, there seems also be this very tight control or this tight idea of it. I mean, and I could be wrong, but when we, we were in, installing that work, there's a moment where you lay everything out on the floor. I mean, it took up the whole gallery, right? And they, they're like trees. They're all different levels. They're all different heights. You're like walking amongst a forest of this. And I thought to myself, he must have gotten a 
flew flown up to the ceiling <laughs> to be able to look down to know what this was going to be like, right? But that kind of like somehow this kind of control you have over the materials and this that you're able to see it even as you're working on this granular level of detail to understand what it's going to be experienced as. Well, you, you know, like I was saying earlier, you, you have to let go. Mm -hmm. So once you, once you let go of control, then other new things are introduced. It's replaced by other other um, forms of, uh, of, of, uh, of possibilities. So like, um, you know, building a composition uh, with my studio space is not, big enough to actually lay something like that out. I have to actually know where I'm going within myself. And then when I get it to the location, put, you know, put it back together so that it's, it can be fully uh, realized as a, 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 a understood composition. But I have to know all those things within myself. And that was what I was saying before about actually realizing yourself as the weather. You have to kind of respect um, uh, uh, chaos as a, as a form, as, as, as an absolute necessity, you know? In order to sort of meet the uh, you know your ends, so they're, they're, you know I, I I you know I'm I embrace it, I just embrace it you know so you know <laughs> yeah but if you were to come to the studio you would know and Jordan could tell you it's like about about <laughs> it ain't that big <laughs> but, he, but, he, but he does have a high lift that goes up. And That's down. right. I don't fly around like Superman and like putting things up. Uh, no, 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 There's a lift that gets you up to the to, to the. Uh, there's right. a there's a high ceiling of 30, okay. 30 feet. Yes. So uh, and other things are like uh, my my assistant said he like to store things up here. You know to, to rescue them, and he he has actually rescued a few pieces because uh, there there are works that have actually made it out of there. Because he would hide them into the you know pockets of storage up on the on the ceiling, and I you know I'm not thinking about them. But if they're on at ground level where I can actually see them, you know, <laughs> they're, they're going to get worked, you know, or reworked, you know. But uh, 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 but that's a that's a whole other story. So <laughs> talk about the art world today. Um, who are a few of the artists that you just are um, just awfully excited about and inspired about? Who? Well, I, in the beginning with that, I was like Sarah Kiefer, now is my good friend Mark Bradford. Um, you know, like uh, uh, it, it, it's it's a long list of, I mean, like right now at the Tate, they have Louise Nevelson and myself. Um, and so, um, and she has always been coming at Louise Nevelson. So, so and, you know, uh, obviously powerful artists. And when I, when I came out in 92, uh, people didn't know what I looked like, who I was. So it was always interesting to sneak up on people, to sort of like, you know, to sort of hear what they were saying and actually to even get in, the, the, the rub them, you know, to start trouble, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so, so you know, they, they didn't know who I was. So they thought in the beginning, because of Ava Hess, Louise Nevelson, um, they thought, okay, um, obviously he's, he's drawing his energies from these folks and also from Art de Progra. Um, uh, Cornelis and like, uh, so, and they thought maybe he's like European. You know, like uh, uh, and like uh, how these yeah, they 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 did not they didn't start at you know like he's he's a he's a he's a black man you know so 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 I would always get in and sort of like just you know you know try to find out more you know so it's like uh so what you know what do you think you know like oh they oh, this is, this is, I like his work I said why you like this stuff you know. <laughs> <laughs> It makes no sense, you know. It's like, and, you know, and, and and they would explain to you who you are, you know. But that's that's that is the trick of the mirror, you know. If you're standing in front of it, if you're not told, and at that time I was already onto no titles, you know, people were already stepping to it and realizing their selves in front of the piece. So I could ask them openly about how they were feeling about it, mm -hmm. and they would find themselves in it, and they would explain me back to me. So uh, it, 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 that that is, you know, I, I, it, it, it's it's the most fun I can have as an artist, you know. So 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 as, I, as I'm moving forward, I think that like, uh, yeah, I would like to have more, um, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, moments like that mm -hmm. where you know, and I and I, I think that yeah, it's it's um, it, it, it's it's a better it it was a decision that was made very early on to sort of allow the viewer to. Sort of, be complicit in finishing work, um, and it's one that I still, to this day, believe that it, it's, it was the best direction I could possibly take. You know, um, um, no reason to sort of beat your chest about, I want you to think about 
what you're seeing. I'm going to tell you exactly what you should be seeing. And I'm going to do it by not only the title, but I'm going to have words right next to it to tell you exactly what my thoughts were on this. And I say, if, if you're going to be an abstraction, a, tr a true abstractionist, then why don't you allow um, the natural forces, you know, which is all of you guys, to sort of stand in front of it and have their experience, you know? If, if it's a black hole, it's going to bring them in, you know? And they should be able to find themselves out of that black hole without my system, you know? You know, you, you, uh, uh, you're an artist and a friend. But let me ask you, because I love these harder questions. Do you think of yourself, or do you think you're perceived as an artist who is black, or a black artist? Is there a difference? <laughs> Interesting enough, at growing up in the, in the projects, you know, um, I spent a lot of time gathering material, um, not just actually the, the life around me, but also live right next to the dump, you know, the landfills. And like and I, to this day, my work still echoes. I don't use found objects in my work. Um, I, all these things are fabricated in the studio. And then I do actually have to become the weather so that it echoes found objects. And like, uh, 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 but the fact is, um, once you sort of realize that path, you don't think of yourself <laughs> as a black person, you know, like it's that like you are, you know. And you just navigate, you know, through, you know, and past all these things. I, I don't think there's been a moment, you know, not that these things don't exist, where I've actually been stopped at trying to make what I do, you know. So that was why that, that question from that guy from our forum irritated me so, because he completely missed the point, you know. That, if you're an artist, you got to make art. It, it's, it's not whether you're black you know, like a white or whatever, what your sensibility is, you were born this, and you're going to have to now deal with it. And, um, uh, uh, and, and so, no, it's, 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 it's not about courage. It has very, absolutely nothing to do with courage. You know, I still have arguments with uh, collector friends, not you, <laughs> but people, folks who are kind of like on this whole path of like, oh, it's just the courageous thing you're doing. I say, you, you're crazy. <laughs> this is this is has nothing to do with that. It's, this is you know, and trying to explain it to them and trying to see it how they're seeing this. It's like you just you know, it's 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 not about courage. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's why it's nothing up, zero to do with courage. That's yeah. why it's upstairs. Mm. Someone that has this um, a genetic predisposition to an aesthetic, okay, that came out in you as a little boy, mm -hmm. uh, and then has this burning message that has to get out. You don't have any choice. I mean, you have that's to get right. that out, that's is right. what you're trying to say. That's right. And, then, you, and then you've done it in a way that is your own brand. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. what's make, made you rise to the level you are. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, it also, it, it, it's also a sanctuary. Now, what I'm describing here actually is not a way of making art, but it's actually a philosophy. It's a life philosophy. So if, if you were to take what I'm saying, you know, and strip away the, the trimming, which is art, you still come away, hopefully, with the, uh, the possibilities of actually, you know, um, hopefully, um, I'm, I like to believe that I'm, I'm trying to evolve. Um, um, and within the work, you're trying to do that. But actually, you can do that in life, you know. It's, it's, it's not like I'm not that special. It's a, evolving actually is a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a thought, a philosophical thought. And you have to actually get and, you know, like, you know, put your, put your ass in motion to sort of like to evolve, you know. So that's why I can't think about black, white, whatever. So those things you can't really have, you know, you know, like get in your way to sort of like, you know, realize the next iteration of self. And that self actually is a collective self. It's not a singular self. It's a collective self. It's all of us. So, so, so the, the evolution actually um, uh, as an artist is, 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 is it's, it's the same path that we're taking in terms of how we evolve as human beings collectively. We have a tour of your work, uh, uh, of just your work, a solo exhibition traveling around the country. And yet here we have your work as part of a group exhibition. When you walk into each of those shows, do you feel differently or how do you react when you... I just think that, well, I got to get back to the studio. <laughs> 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 I get to work, maybe. It's like, well, you know, no, there's, 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 you know I, I look at other artists' works and I, I start salivating. So, you know, it's always like, you know, it's just another way of accessing, you know, like what else is possible? Well, like upstairs when you walk mm -hmm. through there, who did you salivate over? Uh, Julie's work, Mary too. Um, um, also Kiki, 
who's also a friend. Um, um, I mean, I don't see this art. I mean, there's it's, it's, it's a whole bunch of them. And, and the uh, artist, the painter, I had no... Yeah. 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 Wow. Those were, I think those would yeah. resonate. Yes, yes, but does he make lar larger without the grid? I mean, does he just do the... No. Interesting. Yeah, because I can only imagine now. how really powerful. I really want to talk to him now. I'm like, yeah. Is he special. Do? Special. Yeah, that's special. You'd like him. Yeah. Yeah, he's the real thing. Mm. Should we let other questions. people ask some questions, too? We could say no. I might open. Go ahead, Jordan. <laughs> what would you like to ask? Yeah, then, yeah, project. Thank you so much for the talk and sharing your work with us. I guess I'm curious to rip off of your metaphor of weather. Could you describe a time when there was a perfect storm of weather, kinetics, and poetics of space that actually? Change the way that you saw it in your words. Mm, yeah, I I I I consider I can count probably like four different situations. Usually those are if you're looking at a what do you call those things typography. What's it? They're gonna go up and down or whatever. But at the, where they peak and they say, okay, well, all things came together. Right now, this is a moment. Right at this moment, there's a moment happening um, where it, it it can take something like 15 years, you know, to sort of like collect enough information, um, that means actually getting out in the world and collecting information, um, uh, of, of making things, meeting people, um, uh, and then how all those things culminate, sort of like, and you know it when it happens. You know, I can almost point at like that work we're looking at, the, the catacomb piece, whatever. Um, if we were to look at the earlier works, it, you, we can, why don't we do that? That's the beginning already. Okay, I think, go, go to the next one. Keep going. Yeah, that's the keep going, keep going, keep going. Mm -hmm. Okay, stop, stop. Go back to that one, right. Okay, this I would say is like the mother piece to all my work, but this is where I said, okay, you tie your hands uh, uh, and took seven, seven years to realize this. Go back, go back, C keep going, because that's it. Okay, right there. This is what, the, 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 when I, would, okay, I'm sorry, go back more, go back more. Why don't we just go, uh, right, keep going. Right? Go. No, no, I'm sorry. No, go, 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 go back. Keep, keep forward, forward, forward. Right there. All right. So black, you know, like uh, when I was working painting in color, what you saw just uh, just previously, you know, this is, you know, like uh, my time, my hand say, okay, no more of doing what you're, what you're capable of. Let's try to figure out um, what abstraction can be. So that means like, just tie your hands, no more of the, the, the easy stuff. And now we're just working with this black paper and ink. And this is what came of that. Keep going. Next one. Next one. Okay. This is the first sculpture. And you see it's still working with black, but actually now things are coming more defined. But I was working with like, like dead animal parts, believe it or not. <laughs> like, uh, you know, like uh, finding roadkill and stuff like that. And um, go to the next one. You can see actually the, the bones and things. And still trying to sort of figure things out. But the, where I found my voice, where all those things came together, it's the next one. Keep going. That one. Mm -hmm. Now, this is number eight. Now, you got to know that um, before number eight, there's one to seven. All those pieces were devoured to become number eight. <laughs> so all the works that you saw before probably were like the one just before that was like number seven and number six. But this is the one which actually survived and is the mother piece to all the works. So if you're asking me that question about where how things sort of come together, that's a coming together right there, you know. And um, and there are other points that follow thereafter, and you might even start to be able to make sense. Let's go really quickly through the next, the next to the next one, that one, this rusted one. Now keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. We're gonna go to the that one. If, if you were to put that number eight and the rust, other rusted piece together, yeah, I'm just I'm mapping it out to you. You can see to see the combination, how those elements came together, it physically came together to become that. And it now introduced the next leap, the next jump. And so these things happen. I mean, you, it takes time, but there's all these in-betweens that have to happen in order for the next sort of like, hopefully the next peak to, to occur. But it, they're always recognizable to me as the artist. So I'm just get, letting you guys in on a secret. But there's a, I think for every artist, there's that point where it's like, you know, aha moment, where it's like, you know, you keep working, you keep working, and you got all these rotating, these seven crying babies. And at some point, they're going to introduce the, 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 you know, the, the culmination, you know. 
Mm -hmm. So you just suggested that you're at that moment again. So do you want to tell people what you have in store for Art Basel? <laughs> It makes what's upstairs look tight. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a sad. Their 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 colors been now introduced, mm -hmm. and like um and got to know that uh, color is introduced, but there's still the the, the uh, configurations and the knowledge of all those things that came before. So now all those elements now have to come together and to become what we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that it, it's 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 starting to become more apparent to me. That's all. Yeah. I'm sorry. You ask a question. Mm -hmm. Kyle? Yeah, uh, first, just want to say how infectious it is to listen to you, like being in front of your work, which is multiplying the imagination in so many different ways through a wonderful thing. But uh, opening up space, you know, like you keep saying. I was wondering, you said, talk about seven crying babies. I was wondering, what do you, how do you feel and understand the components of those things, or the possible components? You're making them. And you talked about nature, and I remember Jennifer, the we're talking about next nature, kind of fantasy nature. But now we're just wondering about how you think about all those hundred thousand of component pieces that lie there possible in your spiritual, physical relationship to all of those objects. Are they personality things? Do they cry to you? Or are they different from the crack babies that come from the world? You know what I'm yeah, I see. Pieces, mm -hmm. These larger things that come. What's the vitality of all that? Well, you know, right now, you're, you're asking me to make that literal. And right now, we're having a conversation about it. And I'm telling you, but that's not what's going on in the studio. You, you know, it's, I'm only telling you that, you know, you know, from what I understand, this is what's happened. This is what's happened. seven things. But when it's in the studio, it's just like, it's like every man for himself. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're, it's on, baby. And it's like, it, it, there's this, there's no let. There's just like, um... You know, like you're in it. And then I get to come out and you guys ask me to talk and then I get a chance to escape. And I can tell you what that, what, what that was like, that pressure cooker, you know, and that it's like, oh, that one was saying this and that one was saying that. But when you're in it, it's just a whole bunch of noise and they're just, just beating the drum louder and louder and louder. And it's like until you hit this point and then and that's, it's not over. If you decide to park it, like now when I say park it, that just means there, there are a number of artists who are, Mag a magnificent artist, Richard Serra, for instance. Definitely park it. You know, says that this is what I do. You, you, you come when you come to see my work. This is what you're gonna get. And that's that. I don't. I'm not faulting that. I'm just saying that's great. I can't. I don't have a park. I don't have a break. So it's like so it's like it's like that that wagon's going down. It's going down that hill, and there ain't no brakes, baby. So so it's no stop. So it's it, 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 and I'm 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 okay with that. I'm okay with that. But there 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 there's um there's a you know if you don't park it, you got to know that you are sacrificing certain things, material things usually, because people collectors want to know that this is what I'm going to be expecting from this artist, and I want one of those, you know. And I always change it up on them. So it's like, and they always say, hey, you can have one of those and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, <laughs> if I can only accommodate you, well, I don't make rust pieces anymore, you know. <laughs> and I don't make cotton works really, like, uh, but uh, like, uh, but those things were um, a part of what I need to sort of get to to get to where I am right now, you know. So I had to go through them. Yeah. So we're just gonna have time for one more question, and you don't want to take it. Can you have her uh, uh, get, get, get some? Okay. Then, yeah, yeah, I want to hear. Yeah. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. cool. Oh, you, um, We're going to get you, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said um, the viewer uh, completes the work. Mm -hmm. um, the images shown for the discussion showed a great deal of audience engagement with your uh, practice. And I do recall a discussion of this during your lecture at the Men Lady Shrem mm -hmm. at UC Davis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if you would talk about how the viewer competes with Well, if, if, yeah, what I was saying before, like, you, have, you need to sort of get out of the way. In order sort of, for me to sort of get something out of this, that means that you have to be in some way complicit in finishing the journey. So I need to learn from you. And, um, and that way, it's gasoline for me to sort of fuel, for me to sort of push forward. So, so um, 
if I said that I didn't, I wasn't going through slumps or whatever, as the crying babies is one form, the other is just actually listening and saying that you don't necessarily have all the answers. Some of those answers actually are in you guys, and it's like, you know, just listen, it's like, oh, it's, I didn't think of that, I didn't think of that, you know? And a lot, I mean, people come to the studio and they've, like, you know, like uh, in the beginning, when I have remnant parts all over the place on the floor, people will come in and say, can I have that? And I really didn't see the importance of those remnant, but they did. So they come out of there, they frame them, and it's like I go over to their homes and I say, what? I'm like, Where, where'd you get that? How'd you get that thing? <laughs> and it's like, you know, and it's like, I didn't know. I did not know, but they knew. See, they knew. And from that, a whole new body of work flourished. You know, like, uh, I don't, you, you, you've you been asking for one of those kind of pieces. You know what I'm talking about, the 123s with the scattered parts. But they're made of all these remnant parts. And I didn't see that. But visitors to the studio did see that, you know, and still there are like there's a board on the, uh, uh, in, the, in the studio. They have these parts and things and people always try to buy that. <laughs> and it's like that's not that's a that's just a board with, you know, remnant parts. But they're seeing an actual work of art. And from that, from the fact that they saw, I actually started making <laughs> monstrosities that are, you know, you know, based on their vision, you know. Yeah. Mm hmm. Wait, we wanted to ask if you could go back in time to whenever you were about before all of the, you know, things and everything, what would you tell yourself? Keep going. <laughs> you know, keep going, keep pushing. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, you know, you're not, <laughs> like, when I, when, honey, when I was your age, I was already working. <laughs> but it, it, it's, it, it, I, I would tell you, it's, um, support is interesting. Uh, my mother didn't understand. Uh, what, you know, like uh, what it is I was doing. I mean, you're growing up in the projects and you're, you need to draw. And I was drawing on everything, on shoe boxes, on books, on television screens, everything, you know. And she just like this, you know, he's just crazy, you know. So I'd go to school, you know, draw on the test papers. So I was that guy, you know. And um, but, you know, I would tell myself, yeah, you know, in spite of the fact that my mother didn't see it, you know, I kept going. So I'm, I would just tell myself the same. I would say, wow, how did I actually keep going with that, my mother being a force of nature, you know? So as mothers can be, it's like, you know, trying to like stop you, you know, from like doing that. And you need to do that, you know? And I would just say, keep going, baby. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> So I have to say, we are out of time. This has been so incredibly delightful. You know, we haven't spent a lot of time together in rooms talking like this. I mean, That's luckily true. we're back into classroom spaces, you know, but this has just felt like, I don't know, just so fulfilling the exhibition and Jordan, thank you so much for allowing this to happen. I swear, I mean, we were like, this is the only exhibition we could have done because of COVID. We were just so like, how are we going to do this? And you came like a, you know, um, just the perfect thing. And Leonardo coming and actually sitting and talking with us on this weird Thursday afternoon. I have when it actual rain outside. I mean, yeah, it's, it's just been almost magical. And I just really thank you both. And I hope all of you come tomorrow for the reception and come and have go boxes of food and all the weird stuff we do now with COVID and hang out with us and chat more about wonderful work. And thank you. Thank you.